In this video, we are gonna be ranking 12 of the most popular gaming chairs, including premium products from brands like Herman Miller and also popular racer style gaming chairs from Secret Lab. We're gonna kick it off with the Logitech Embody. Ryan, what do you got? This is a good one to kick it off with just because it's a really high-end gaming chair, obviously up around 1800 bucks, and I've been using it for almost three weeks straight now, and I actually really like it. Really comfortable seat, backrest is supportive, a lot of movement, super good build quality, so for me, easy A tier. Robert, what do you think? I think it feels even better than the original Embody we have. It seems to just not have some of the problems of pushing my shoulders forward as much as our original Embody. I'm actually going to go S tier on this chair. I love the kind of suspended feeling in the seat, has a little more padding than the original Embody. Uh, some have said that they can feel the lines in the back, but I don't really feel that at all. I love the look of this chair, so this is my S tier gaming chair. For sure. I mean, it's really close for me. That extra padding on it kind of takes away the feeling of the pixelated system. And I could sit in it for long periods of time. The arms were nice and large. They don't necessarily have as big of a range as some of the ones with like 40 arms, but they're massive. So they cover everything I need. So they're super comfortable. I would say the one miss for me is just in the backrest because of the curve of it. It kind of curls my shoulders forward. I can use the chair, but it does become uncomfortable over time. So I'm going A, but it's, I could see S tier. The Razor Isker chair, which is completely different than the last one. Robert, what do you think? So I found the bolsters on this chair to be pretty restricting, almost as bad as some of the other cheaper racing style gaming chairs. So you can have basically as much lumbar as you could ask for with this chair. So if you like a lot of lumbar, this is the chair for you. But what I found is that it kind of pushes me in the lower back. It doesn't push me in my lumbar region. It just kind of pushes at like the bottom of my spine. I'm going to go D on this. I'm going to be in a similar spot. The lumbar is just really gimmicky to me. I think it was a good idea, but once you see it executed, it's probably something that you just shouldn't bring to market. You're also not getting great policies with a 14-day return policy and only a three-year warranty. So I'm going to be right there with Robert with a D. I like the stitching on it. The upholstery is really cool. You can pour water on it, just like beads right off of it, which is pretty unique. Forgot about that. The arm pads are nice and widely adjustable, but the seat's a bit too narrow, which is awkward. And that lumbar support's ridiculous. Yeah. Like It's just like insane. It pushes you <laughs> off the seat. Right. There's no flexibility to it, but I'm going to go C minus on this one. I'm going to be a little bit different than the other guys. All right, so DDC, so maybe yeah. D plus. Robert, you're sitting in the Mavics M9 yes, I am. chair, and I got to know what you think of this chair because I like it a lot. I love the back on this chair. I would give this an A tier for just the back. It's nice and tall. It fits me really well. My shoulders hit nice. The lumbar is nice and supportive. When you lean into it, it just flexes back for you. So I love the back. The seat, not so much. I probably would go as low as a D almost. I just feel like I sink through it and it gets hard for me. So if you get a little off center, you're hitting some hard edges. It's going to average out to a C for me. I mean, this is X Chair's gaming line. I think this is actually probably their best chair that I've personally sat in. This feels like an improved Ergo Human or IOO chair. It fixes the back angle thing that's kind of a problem on the Ergo Human chair because it does have independent back angle adjustment, which allows you to really get up into your upper portion of your back. The arms are okay. You might want to upgrade to their next level arms, which are like 170 bucks. Mm -hmm. So it really brings this chair up to almost like $1,200. Yeah. But their warranty is still a miss on this, like it is on X chair stuff. And I mean, if you want to have a product that's going to be close to Herman Miller in price, you got to match them on the warranty. And it is a massive miss. I got to say it's a B plus because the warranty specifically. I have a hard time with Mavix's policies just in general. When you paste 30 day money back guarantee risk free on your site, but you charge 122.22 to return the chair and you advertise a 12 year warranty, but it's actually a five year warranty on some stuff, a three year warranty on some stuff. They cover shipping for two years, but not the rest. I, I don't like that type of advertising. I think the chair is decent. I think I'd probably rank it a B tier for comfort, but because of the policies, I'm gonna bring it down to a C tier overall. So I gotta say one last thing though, the recline on this thing from a gaming chair standpoint yeah. I think they nailed it on that I think 100%. it's where the gaming chair meets an office chair that it's actually super comfortable in a full recline yeah we'll give it some extra credit we'll go B minus here the S racer formerly known as the Hamel chair it has like 70,000 reviews yeah on Amazon, 4.4 out of 5. I mean, it's not possible. A lot of people own this chair, so I feel like we're about to offend a lot of people here. Yeah, but I mean, This is like the bottom of the barrel racing style gaming chairs. Very low quality build. You're basically getting no warranty. It's not comfortable at all. It doesn't feel like it's going to last more than like a year or a few months. This is easy F tier. I honestly want to say that it should go below F tier. It should. And I mean, it's funny when you look at the arm pads, they're just like rock hard. They're yep. just plastic. 
plastic molds and there's no height adjustment to them. You sit in the chair, it just squeaks. It's awful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like you said, probably below F because it's one of those chairs that it almost feels like it's a punishment to have to sit in it. I'd rather sit in my hard wooden kitchen chair. This is an F tier. Yeah, that's easy. So moving on to our Secret Lab Omega chair. We've had this chair in the office for a long time. It's a step up from like our previous chair, these GT Racing S racers, but it still has the problem of the bolsters for me. It has kind of a dual pad system where you have the lumbar pad, the headrest pad, kind of pushes your lumbar out too far because it's a pretty hard pad. The headrest pushes you out. So kind of the middle of your back doesn't really rest on anything if you get rid of those pads and you have a super hard backrest. So this is a D chair for me. From an aesthetic standpoint, I think Secret Lab probably does the best job with these bucket style racing chairs. I mean, I think their stitching's on point. The quality feels a lot better than like that S racer chair. I think they nailed it there. The lumbar pad is the old school like pad that's a pad. And if, if you remove it, because if I have it in there, I can't fit. Like half my legs are off the chair. You take it out, I have no lumbar support. It's just straight up and down. And it's really hard to sit on a seat because it's rock hard. I got to go F tier here. I feel bad just because I know that the S racer's F tier and these two chairs are completely different quality. But from a comfort standpoint i just it's they're both awful it's like there's kind of different categories of gaming chairs now you have the original style gaming chairs like the s series just the straight hard bucket style and then you kind of have some hybrids like the titan that are incorporating some office chair stuff and then you have things like the embody which is just an office chair that's specced for gaming i would say that the omega is the best of the first version so if you like that first version racing style it's going to be the best version of that i just hate that style and again i don't love the policies from secret lab with them forcing you to submit stuff to social media to get their five-year warranty and I believe they still charge like 150 bucks for return shipping on their guaranteed return policy or whatever. So I would bump it up to D tier, but I can't go any higher than that just because it doesn't do anything phenomenal for me. Okay, so we're going D. The Herman Miller sail chair, I think the seat pad's comfortable. I like the arm pads and the backrest is nice and different, but it's just too short for me. So like if you're 5'10", this chair is something I would definitely look at. I gotta say the colors helped it up a little bit, but I'm still gonna go, I think it's like a C. For me, this is a B tier chair just because I fit in it nicely. The back supports me well. I really like the flexibility that you get with that kind of poly material. The seat's comfortable and I like the four-way arms. Doesn't really have the chops to get up to A tier for me. Robert? Yeah, I'd like there to be probably a little more lumbar I think I'd be a little more comfortable in it it's the same problems as Greg where it's just it's a little too small like if they made like a XL size of this chair that would fit someone over six foot this would probably be an A tier chair because I really love the comfort like Greg said the seat is nice it has just the right amount of kind of cush but firmness at the same time just because of the size I, my legs are hanging away off the front on that chair so I, I'm gonna go C but again if you fit in that chair I could easily see people giving that an A the Fern Halo series gaming chair, which I'm currently in. I like the original Fern that we had in here, which is basically spec exactly like this chair. The only difference being it had a fabric seat versus this vegan leather. Otherwise, it's all styling difference. I like the armrests a lot, actually. I didn't like them in the beginning as much as I do now. Really, they felt like a cheaper version of the steel case arms, which they still kind of are, but they fit me well. They've got a good range to them, and I don't mind the firmness on them anymore. I like the seat comfort. I like the lumbar support. I don't like the headrest, so I just kind of feel like that's a bit of a waste, but this chair an A tier chair for me because I like the little bit of additional padding that you get from that vegan leather. I know you think it's warm, but I, I like it a lot. I think it gets warm after three or four hours, but not to the point that I would hate using the chair. So I actually use the Fern with no headrest, no lumbar is my favorite chair, digital knit backrest. And I think the gaming chair is close to that. I do like the extra kind of cushion and softness on the seat. So I'd still go A tier with this, but it does get a little bit warm and I wish I could get it without the headrest. Hayworth, make it available without the headrest. Yeah. I mean, that brings me right to my kind of reason why I knocked this chair down a little bit is that headrest. I mean, you're forced to get the headrest with the Halo gaming chair, and I just really don't like that headrest. So for me, this is a B chair. It would be an A if it didn't have the headrest. Arms are really nice. Seat is nice, kind of firmness, but still enough cushion. Super comfortable chair. Just knock it down for that headrest. All right. So it's still staying A. New chair, Noya, Noa. I don't know how to say it, to I have be honest. no idea. I just know that we get <laughs> asked about this chair a lot. I got to say, it looks really good. And it kind of outpunches its price from a look standpoint. But then you sit in it, and it's not as great. Hard edges with the foam pad. Unfortunately, doesn't have armrests that are 4D adjustable. So you're missing width and depth adjustment. Mm -hmm. I think I like the headrest the most because it's out of the way when you sit up. And when you get back in the chair, it's really comfortable. But then you lose all the lower support in the chair and recline. So like from a gaming 
chair standpoint. I think I got this thing at C minus just because it's not that comfortable. It didn't feel super solid to me. It didn't fit me great mainly because the arms and the old school mesh design with the pad in the front is just terrible for me. And the whole warranty thing from Secret Lab, they have it going again on this chair. It's confusing and it's not a straightforward warranty. So I'm going to be right there C minus with Greg. So I actually went down to a D for this. I felt like I was sinking through the mesh too much and kind of hitting the, the seat frame, which is just uncomfortable. The back is just a little too short for me. So again, you know, at 6'2", that might be why it's a problem for me more so. So to me, it just was had a lot of things that were uncomfortable. I actually didn't hate the arms. They don't have a lot of adjustment, but they kind of look and feel pretty nice. And it's always kind of fancy having the adjustments right under the arm. Yeah, those trigger arms are interesting for sure because they, they do the height adjustment and the recline function. And it's got a ton of different spots that you can stop and recline. Line. It made me continuously just lower my seat over and over randomly. I don't know why I couldn't get over that. <laughs> I got nothing. You just wanted to play with the buttons? Or? Yeah. <laughs> So moving on to the Herman Miller Aeron. Gaming version is basically just a black Aeron. And personally, I think it looks awesome, especially like we put it in front of this white set. Looks super premium. So I could see this just looking great in a lot of gaming setups. This is just your top end mesh chair. You sink just the right amount. To me, it gives me that perfect suspended feeling. If you want to sit nice and upright, you can do that. If you want to kind of kick back and recline a little bit, you can also do that. And you're not going to get a better recline than the Aeron. So that's an A. I don't love mesh seats. That's no secret. But the Aeron is going to be the top of the line mesh chair. It has the best seat design for me because they removed that front foam lip. It's still kind of that bucket seat with the hard edges and you don't get any flexibility out of it, but I love the backrest. I really love the armrest and the recline is better than any recline I've ever used. Even though I don't love it from a seat comfort standpoint, I still have a hard time not giving this an A rating just because it is the premium of the premium in mesh chairs. From a mesh seat standpoint, it's got to be up there next to maybe the Cosm is the most comfortable seat mesh that I've used. The remastered fixed the front edge problem for me, but the side bolsters definitely still a problem. But yeah, I mean, the recline is ridiculous. The arm pads are super comfy. This chair from a build quality warranty standpoint, it's up there at the top of the list, but the seat brings it down to B plus for me. Average out to an A, still way up there. Now you got a secret lab Titan that's got to go after, I mean, what is this, the most iconic chair ever versus the most iconic gaming bucket style racing chair? I think secret lab is definitely taking the throne as the yeah. most recognizable gaming chair brand yeah. surpassing DX racer. And the Titan is definitely headed in a good direction in terms of the racing style seat, removing the hard side bolsters on that seat, giving you some built in lumbar support. And I really, really love the pillow design with the magnetic feature, but it still is very, very rigid. This isn't a chair that I could sit in for more than a couple hours. So it's really hard for me to put this any higher than C. I do think that this is the best racing style gaming chair on the market so far. I just can't get it into the B tier. The lumbar support, it's height and depth adjustable and it removed the pillow. The headrest is one of my favorite features on the chair. And those removable arm pads are actually a nice feature because that's something that goes off all the time. I mean, those fall apart. It is what it is when you bang them into your desk and things. So the miss here for me is the fact that with all these changes, they just refuse to change the softness of the seat or lack thereof because it is a brick and I cannot sit in it. I've tried it's like 30 minutes to an hour and my butt goes numb. So I'll probably go C minus. Yeah, I mean, you guys kind of said it all. It's like it's very much in the middle of the pack of all these chairs that we've been looking at. It's, there's so many that are going to be a similar price that I would much rather have. So it's kind of hard to go any higher than a C. Right next to the other Secret Lab chair. We've got the GT Racing <laughs> chair, which is incredible. I mean, this thing is like the exact replica of the S Racer, but improved because it has padding on its own arms and the arms move up and down that is the only difference and so it's an f plus i think i'm going to f plus there's just no getting around this is a void right once you get under 200 dollars on a gaming chair it's going to be very very low quality it's not going to be comfortable for most people it's not going to fit most people if you find one that fits you perfectly then it'll probably be decent for a year or two but you can't expect any longevity out of these chairs so yeah f tier definitely yeah, I thought it's maybe one step above the S Racer. I didn't think that the bolsters felt as bad, and maybe that's because the padding is just slightly thicker. I'm not sure. Maybe it's also hasn't been sat in as long. But yeah, you just you can't get these above that F tier. Just they're uncomfortable. 
Yeah. All right. Herman Miller Vantum. It looks so good from a chair that was made for a gaming chair that maybe your significant other would actually approve of this chair, say in the living room, bedroom, something like that. But while I like the backrest and I don't mind the, well, I don't really love the arm pads, but the headrest is good for me. The rest of the chair is just, it's a seat that's made for a child with a price for an adult. I don't know if that makes any sense to you. It doesn't to me. And I got to say, if the sale is where the sale is, I got to go D tier. It just doesn't feel like a higher end Herman Miller chair. It feels like a lower end one, similar to the Varus or the Lino. I don't think it feels as solid as the sale. I didn't think it was super uncomfortable, but the seat isn't great. I do like the fact that they recently lowered the price. So you no longer have to pay a thousand dollars for what this it thing. Now? It's $7.95 now. And that's the permanent price of this chair now. So for a thousand dollars for this chair, I'd have to be somewhere probably around C or D from a pure value standpoint. I think in my review, I recommended not to get this chair for a thousand. For 800 bucks, it really gets into that wheelhouse of chairs where that's kind of a tough price range. And so for me, the Vantum kind of comes back into the conversation of being a decent value. And I'd have to give it a B tier because of that. I mean, as long as that's accurate, which I'm assuming I it is. I chatted with them this morning to confirm. That's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> I would go up to C then in that case, just because the thousand dollar price tag was just hard to get there with the value. Yeah. This is another chair that for me, is just too small. So with the sale, I said, if I could get a sale XL and maybe would put it in an A tier. If I could get like a Vantum XL that would fit me better, it maybe would be a B, but that's even pushing it. So that's why I, I still stick with a C. The value with that little cheaper price that helps it for sure, but it just has really small seat. The arms are okay. I actually don't mind the kind of curve to them. They have kind of that uh, slanted edges, which I don't mind, but they don't have a ton of adjustability. So uh, this is a C. So I think we got a pretty nice spread there with all the chairs. What do you guys think? Did we hit on these? Did we miss? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching.